Well, I started, I suppose, wanting to be part of theatre when I was about five years old in Australia before I left um, to come to England when I was ten. Um, but it was mostly, a, it was a, like a dance school and she was called Heather Gell, this woman, and, and I played a water baby in Maeterlinck's Bluebird and I played a rat in the Pied Piper of Hamelin. So, you know, there's this little toddler, this five-year-old, you know, the little leotard and the gills. And so those, that was my first time on a stage. So I was quite young when I appeared on a stage. And so I, I studied ballet throughout my entire school days and did my GCSEs, O-levels as they were called then. But then I realised I was not going to be, I was not going to be good enough to be a prima ballerina, so I, I set my sights on acting. I decided I would change and become an actress instead. And then I went to drama school. I went, so I went very young to drama school. I refused to go to university, which is probably a shame. But in a way, I suppose drama school was my university. So I was 17 when I went to Central, Central School of Speech and Drama. And my first jobs were in weekly rep. Um, I, the Connaught Theatre in Worthing was my very first job. And then I did quite a few plays there where you learnt the part you rehearsed it in the morning, you learnt it in the afternoon, and a week later you went on and did it, and then the night after you'd started that you'd learn another play. Well, I couldn't do that now. <laughs> There's no way I could learn a play in a week. Definitely. I think it was really good training. I mean, I think it's sad for people now. There's no week, there's no rep, repertory, let alone weekly rep. I mean, obviously I, I progressed on to three weekly and four weekly rep, which had more, more skill attached to it because, you know, we had longer to rehearse plays, a proper thing. And I was at the Birmingham Rep and places. Uh, but I think it was really good. Yes, I think it's good training that you actually have to. I'm not saying that it might not have been the most wonderful acting in the world, it might not have been the most wonderful production in the world, but the fact that the discipline of having to do it and get over the fear, I think it's very good training, and particularly when you're very young and you, you're able to do that more. I, I did quite a lot of television, and I did theatre, but probably more television in my first ten years, and then I decided that the kind of theatre I was doing was boring, and it was not really what I had envisaged myself doing and I sort of envisaged myself as a as a physical theatre person but in those days there wasn't any physical theatre in this country apart from Stephen Burkoff he was the only purse practitioner I mean the complicity and all of those kind of companies weren't running then and I had been acting for 10 years when I was complaining to a friend of mine about this and he said well I know Stephen Burkoff should I um, introduce you to him because I mean he is amazing and he, he is the per most perfect physical theatre practitioner in this country at the moment. So he set up a meeting and I did meet him and Stephen liked me and I liked him. So about six months later, he asked me to be in the trial, the, his, his adaptation of the Kafka, the trial, which was being done at the Roundhouse. And that was in 1973 I did that. So I met him in late 72 and, and did that. And that was the first job I did with him. And of course he was a hard taskmaster. It was very, very hard because I had never done any mime and I had to learn it all by watching him because he doesn't sort of teach you, he just expects you to be able to follow. And um, so it was, it was a baptism of fire working with him the first time. And I thought, God, I don't know if I can continue this way because it's really hard and he's really hard. I mean, it's just, you know. Anyway, in that um, company, I met these two girls, um, Teresa Debru and Jude Alderson, and they, were in his company as well and they said look we're thinking of doing this rock theatre, this feminist rock theatre group. So we, the three of us, to cut a long story short, plus Jackie Taylor who wrote the music, we all joined together. We found the name the Sadista Sisters when we invented that name and we proceeded to write and perform our own show. Well, it was a huge success, and we actually had a record album. We had a record contract, and we, we even appeared at the Reading Festival with 30,000 people with the heavy metal groups. But we went to Berlin. We were very successful for a little while, and I gave up acting altogether, and I just was with the Sadista Sisters. And it, we, we were a pre-punk, rock, feminist female group. You know, inevitably we all started fighting amongst ourselves which way the group should go. One Jude wanted it to be far more serious feminist, we didn't. So we sort of gave up after three and a half years and she kept it going for a while. He rang me and said, well it's time we work together again. I want you to come play Gertrude to my Hamlet. You've got to do it, you've got to do it. And I said, well I've got a tiny baby. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. It's great, congratulations, you've got to come. <laughs>
So that's when I started working with him over a good many years. So that made me a more, my whole career became more maverick. I sort of shunned the commercial world, so therefore I sort of did myself out of that a bit. But at the same time, I have no regrets because I really have, I feel I've had an interesting career and I've really loved all the different things I've done. And then I've gone back, I mean, God, I was in EastEnders for two and a half years, I've gone back to doing television, I do quite a lot of television as well. And now there's that lovely mixture. And I'm still going after 57 years. No, it is 57 years I've been doing it.